The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. The eyes of two outstanding college quarterbacks, Marvin Graves of Syracuse and Glenn Foley of Boston College. And which one of these quarterbacks will step up today and be the key leader in this game? It'll go a lot toward determining the outcome of this matchup between Boston College and Syracuse here. And the Carrier Dome in Syracuse will be rocking. We've got another sellout crowd on hand. ABC Sports welcomes you to a Big East matchup. The Eagles of Boston College against the Orange Men of Syracuse. So good afternoon and welcome everybody with the coach, Dick Vermeer, live Brett Musburger. You know, this has been a jinx arena for Boston College. They've never won in this dome, 0-6. Well, what makes it so tough, Brent, is Syracuse runs a very sophisticated option offense. And you don't see that much in college football very much anymore. So the only time you really get to prepare against it is the week you play them. Then you add the quality quarterback like Marvin Graves to it, who can both run and pass. You have problems. Speaking of sophistication, <laughs> let's go down to John Saunders in our New York studio. John? The fraud deadbeats cost you money Tuesday night at 11. It's a wonderful time of year for many of you. October is your favorite month, isn't it? Up here in the Northeast, the leaves are starting to turn. Orange, the preferred color. Nice to have Julie Moran back with us. And uh, Julie, there's a change down here on the floor of the Carrier Dome. You got that right, Brent. The grass is a little greener in the Carrier Dome. It only cost them $700,000. But look what they got. The finest carpet that money can buy. Since the dome was built in 1980, they hadn't changed the AstroTurf. The life expectancy of the old carpet was 8 to 10 years. But the Orangemen kept it around for 13 years because they won on it. They felt like it was lucky. For BC, they're just trying to break the jinx of not winning here. In fact, I was talking to a couple of the seniors after practice yesterday about trichskedekophobia. You know what that is, Brent? The fear of the number 13. They feel like the bad luck is coming Syracuse's way for changing the turf on the 13th year. Dick, we'll have to remember that's a key word. Today. I never even heard of that word before. <laughs> <laughs> coming up in a moment, Syracuse and BC. Boston College coach Tom Coughlin played here at Syracuse, was the captain in 67. Paul Pasqualani, once a linebacker at Penn State in his third year as head coach here at Syracuse. And take a look at Pat O'Neill's statistic here. 75% of the time, he knocks his kickoff right into the end zone and it comes out on the 20-yard line. They'll try to keep it out of the hands of Kenyatta Watson, number four on the left. Anthony Comer, number 28, starting to emerge for BC. And the best way to do it, don't kick away from him, just rip it on into the end zone. And that's exactly what he did. A penalty flag is down back at the 40-yard line from where BC kicked it off at the 35. A so coverage they... man was offsides, Brent. Make him kick it over. Encroachment on the kicking team. This officiating crew happy to be here today and out from the shadow of the Rocky Mountains. This was the crew that had that Donnybrook last week between the Miami Hurricanes and the Buffaloes of Colorado. You know, when you think about this mistake that Syracuse made on the kickoff, somewhat inexcusable when you've got a kickoff man like O'Neill. Don't be offside. He's going to rip it into the end zone. You don't want to give him the option and push it back another five yards. He hit the ball so strongly. And like you said, 75% of the time it goes into sure. the end zone anyway. Now they're going to move it back and kick it over. If he kicks it as well, it's to the goal line. They automatically have a chance to return it. Syracuse has been plagued by mistakes this year. When the season began, you see Paul is upset about that, and he should be. This team was ranked among the elite. But the one big difference with his unit this year is the fact that he lost an awful lot of talent at the defensive side. We will detail that story for you as it unfolds. But to start the game, he's got a mistake. Ball is going to come back on the 30, and it's going to be close as to whether or not O'Neill's going to take this one into the end zone. They've got two threats back there for Boston College, and they've got a chance to get out beyond the 20. 
Paul Pasquinelli told me yesterday in visiting with him, Coach, uh, he said, Coach Coffin, knowing how he likes to run the football, has probably been circ uh, circling Syracuse all week like a buzzard, just waiting to get here to kill him with a running game. Well, let's see how O'Neill does this time. Now Watson from the one. And Watson makes Syracuse pay to the tune of 10 yards. And now it is up to Glenn Foley. Here's a young man who's a senior who sometimes forces it. Four interceptions this year and three touchdowns. Needs to play within himself and get everyone involved in this offense. He'll take the first snap, and as Vermeil told you, they love to establish the run. They'll pound it about 61% of the time. Coming out in the basic eye formation. And they will use Anthony Comer with a huge hole. Comer to midfield on the first carry of the game. Brent, they fired an inside linebacker. It's all right to fire the inside linebacker, but he better make the play. The left center of your screen, you'll see number 50, Kevin Mitchell. See him go underneath right there and try to make that play? He doesn't make it. He should be filling inside out and make the tackle the line of scrimmage. If you go underneath, you better make it. Kevin Mitchell, one of the better nosemen last year, has been switched to stand-up linebacker. Fires complete with his first pass to Greg Grice. Pete Mitchell, the tight end number 82, is the leading receiver for Foley this year. Darnell Campbell's been the workhorse. Pete Kendall really improving at that left tackle spot. And there's Kevin Mitchell playing middle linebacker for Syracuse. Last year, Tony Jones intercepted Foley twice. Campbell, the lone setback. Foley goes down, and Bob Miller, and he catches it just inside the 20-yard line. They used a strong play action pass off the same motion of the, the big tight end coming in motion. They faked the, the, the run right there, pulled the corner. You'll see number nine on the bottom of your screen. I believe a safety should have been over there to back him up. If not, then it was Dwayne Joseph, number nine, mistake. 25 yards to Miller, who's on the sideline. Comer by Foley and he covers it up there's a senior move just pounce down on the ball don't try to pick it up and risk losing it all together you know that's something you take for granted sometimes Brent you've got a senior center and a senior quarterback you think that's automatic and it should be that should not happen yeah, they have not recovered a fumble this year you normally you recover about 50 percent by the end of the season you can see they're a long ways behind that ratio right now syracuse fans have to be uneasy cincinnati popped them on the opening drive last week protection holds up beautifully incomplete in the end zone wanted his tight end mitchell that time and he was well covered number 18 is tony jones with those two picks last year over at boston college you know, Foley did a good job of trying to look the safeties off as the tight end went down the hole, but the safeties maintained the discipline of the coverage call, just watched him, and as he released the ball, they jumped it. This is the first third down for Boston College on this drive, and it's third and 14. Remember, Foley took a four-yard loss on first down. Being chased to the left, no first down here. Now Boston College will have to send in the field goal team. So the Syracuse defense, well, actually, BC didn't execute too well down here on this drive. Dick, on that was a series. broken play, Brent. That yeah. was a broken play. I saw them go over and mention something to Darnell Campbell after that snap. Definitely a mistake made. Coach Coughlin talking to him on the sideline right now. David Gordon, left-footed kicker, Foley the holder. Ball will be put down at the 29-yard line, make it a 39-yard attempt. He's two for three this year. He missed a critical one against Northwestern. 
perfect this time. And BC on the board with a 39-yard field goal. 3-0, BC. Last week, Syracuse overcame a 15-point fourth quarter deficit to beat Cincinnati. This the winning touchdown by Terry Richardson, and it really shocks some folks. 24-21 Syracuse. You know, I don't think it should be that shocking, uh, Brent. You know, I studied the, that game tape, and Cincinnati is a pretty good football team. Coach Tim Murphy doing a good job of rebuilding that program. Uh, there is the punter, Jeff Beckley. He will handle the kickoffs. Terry Richardson and Kirby Dardar. Dardar 42, Richardson 44, back deep for Syracuse. He gets it up really high. That should be very easy to cover. Richardson twists at the 25 and makes his way to the 26-yard line. Marvin Graves, one of the finest all-around quarterbacks in college football with his first opportunity here yes he likes the option but this young man has a long arm six touchdown passes and only two interceptions and the secondary has to be alert when Marvin pulls out on that option and goes downfield as usual Wooten and Richardson are the running backs behind him Marvin now pitching to Richardson across to the 32-yard line. Stephen Boyd got in on his first tackle, and there Shelby Hill, one of the most talented wide receivers in the land, number 12. Reagan, the center, is the key to the Syracuse offensive line. He's a senior and a fine leader. Defensively, Stephen Boyd, we just mentioned his name. We'll mention it all game long, number 50. And the free safety for BC is 49, Terrence Wiggins. A five-yard gain for Richardson. Gives Syracuse a second and five. Wishbone look, and this is Dardar, who explodes to that 41-yard line. See, that kind of counteraction really is tough on inside linebackers. As, as you'll see, now they get slow coming here, and then they come back here. You'll see that. Now, see the hole over to the right? The linebacker starts to flow. They get a cutoff block. In nice gap to run through. Wooten in front of Richardson. Richardson behind the right side of the line. And Mike Mamula coming over to help out Joe Kamara on the tackle. Big John Reagan, number 75, the offensive center right there in the middle of your screen. An outstanding student. Academic All-American. I talked with him the other day, Brent. He told me if he doesn't make an the NFL, he's going to go get his Ph.D., either at the University of Texas or Virginia. Outstanding football player and student athlete. Sticking with that basic eye on second and five. Richardson and hanging on that time was 93, Chris Sullivan, defensive lineman. Marvin Graves is one of the smoothest and slickest ball handlers you'll see in, in college football. He does a great job of hiding the ball. He has a lot of poise on the fake. He doesn't rush it. He'll sit there and almost pause and then move and extend the hand up. Watch his kind of poise. Now watch him just freeze a second. Fake, fake, fake. He really has a lot of poise. Now it's third and two. They show the wishbone. They came with the counter off this look with Dardar. This time they use Marcus Lee, so they put a fullback in that halfback spot, give themselves a little more muscle, and pick up the first down. See, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, uh, they use a lot of formations, Brent, and it really gives a defensive coordinator like Steve Zabel from Boston a lot of problems. And you got to be careful giving your kids too many adjustments against Syracuse, because then not only can they whip you physically, then you make the mental mistakes. So they've tried to really simplify it and take them on a little bit more physically. 
Ball inside the BC 48. That's Hill, number 12, going to the top of your screen. Graves going to throw. Fires complete. Michael Reed with coverage, and Marvin Harrison snapped it down for Syracuse. See, if you're an outside linebacker for Boston, you know you have to stop the run and you, on the option, and you know you also have to play pass defense. Now watch Marvin Graves in the middle of your screen make the play action fake inside. Now he comes down, looks like run all the way. Looks like run. Now he just snaps and throws it right where he has to. Excellent execution. Fine athlete. Six-yard gain. Syracuse goes back with Richardson, who is stopped by the middle of the defense that time. You can see number 50 there, Stephen Boyd, one of the more talented inside linebackers in the East this year. He leads the Eagles in tackles. <laughs> He's been making tackles all his career, Brent. He has 233 tackles coming into this ballgame. He likes to hit people, and he still has another year to go. Syracuse shows shotgun for the first time off the two-yard loss. Notice the up stance by the offensive lineman. Good position to pass protect from that stance. Third and six. Complete and there's a penalty flag comes flying. Boyd was back defending along with Howlett. Interference on the defense. That'll be a first be a down. Spot foul. Automatic first down. See, the linebackers did not drop out of there very far. Stephen Boyd, number 50. He chucks Kent Chenoweth, number 8, and they're trying to actually pick him off there, but his man, the panda, Brian Hallett, comes over the top, gets there just a little early. Brian has uh, already got his college degree here in marketing and is taking some graduate courses right now. Real good student, doing a good job academically as well. Graves off a of pump fake. Still has time. Goes for the bundle. Out of bounds and incomplete. Harrison was the wide receiver. Well covered by Michael Reed, number 17. Good job of coverage downfield by Reed. Well, Marvin Harrison tried to run a hook and go, but like you said, Reed read it and bumped him. But over on the other side of the field, you'll see Hill coming down here on the outside. And Joe Camara there blows the coverage on him, turns him loose, going down the sideline, and he'll say, my gosh, look at me. <laughs> Marvin had committed himself to the right, and the pocket was starting to collapse at the end. He didn't have any more time to look back over there, Dick, but he, you're right, he should have picked him up. Now there is Dardar back into that halfback look out of the wishbone on second and ten. Here's Richardson. Richardson still going out of bounds at the 20 yard line. 19 yard gain for Richardson. The key to running the ball on an option outside is the block by your lead blocker. Watch him get a perimeter block here to the left side of your screen. They'll make the strong fake inside. He'll come down. He's forced to pitch it right now. Now look at the block by Dardar right there. He opens up that alley. Nice blocking by a running back, Kirby Dardar. And Richardson, five carries for 30 yards, shows you why. A nifty move here, and then he spins before he's pushed out here at the 20-yard line. Graves again. He's cut off. <laughs> he turned nothing into something, folks. Hay was surrounded, and watch the footwork here on Marvin Graves. You talk about an athlete. I talked to him on the field Thursday, and he told me he likes the offense because it gets him an opportunity to show his diversity as an athlete. Now watch his footwork here. Now he comes back here, now watch this. Yep. So long, buddy. <laughs> Mamola didn't have a chance, Dick, when he no. made that cut on him. Love this new carpet, <laughs> don't you, Marvin? <laughs> Pounding with the fullback to the 16-yard line, Al Wooten, the 230-pound junior. His 
hand-eye coordination as a quarterback, his poise, his throwing ability, his ability to make a good decision on the move and running that option, really tough the defense. And then you hand the ball off to the likes of a 230-pound fullback in Al Wooden. I mean, he keeps you honest inside. We could have a high score in this one, babe. Wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't want to be defensive coordinator for either side. Third and six for Syracuse, needing to convert here again on third down. Hits Richardson at the six. First and goal, Syracuse. You'll see that... You'll see that Stephen Boyd, who was responsible for coverage, see him over here? He's running over here to get lined up. He was not lined up properly. See, and he got over there late. Now he runs a little in move, ricochet off to the outside. Boy, it's tough enough to cover him when you line up properly. He just got lined up late. Even the band's fired up about that one, and they don't even have to hit anybody. Now first and goal for Syracuse. Richardson, the middle was stacked up, and again, he stepped to the left and gained a couple of yards. Now you say that hole was clogged. Yes, you know, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, told me that Boston College down in this goal line area likes to bring both corners. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if he comes with some kind of high-risk protection where you get a strong run fake and then dump a tight end out real close underneath that blitzing corner. 14th play of the drive. They've answered every challenge. The offense so far. Oh. Defense comes across. That was Tim Morabito, 58. <laughs> That's when you're really intense. Offside on the defense. You're sitting down there. You're, you're back to the goal line. You're trying to protect it. You're going to get after that center. You really have some weight on your hand, and you're listening to the quarterback's command. And that's what happens. Well, hard count come, by Graves, huh? The hard count, right. He has all the tools, extremely well coached by his quarterback coach, Kevin Rogers. Goal at about the two and a half yard line. Second and goal. Pacucci in motion. And Graves will roll in that direction now to Richardson. That's a tough spot. He fumbled, but he was out of bounds. Once a tailback gets the pitch that late and you're that far to the right, that's awfully hard to turn up field and get into the end zone. Great statement, Brent. And the guy that was responsible for that was Danny Kerr, 91. You'll see him left-hand top corner of your screen. He strings it out. See, he strings it out. He has help inside right up on top there. See him stringing it out? does a good job now there's no lane to turn up inside and here comes the fill good defense third and goal this would be a fine spot to hit one of those tight ends down here they used that play against BC last year watch him bring the corners here's the wishbone look Wooten battling held up at the goal line BC waging a stand down here. It'll be at the one foot line. Mike Mamula and Brian Howlett in on the stop. Your normal decision as a coach in this situation, when you know you're moving the ball well, you go ahead and kick the field goal. Now, being on the one inch like that, maybe you don't. But if you're not moving the ball well and you get it down there, then you normally always go for the six points. 16th play coming. The risk here is if you miss, it really gives BC a lift. NFL coaches are always booed, but they'll take the field goal in this situation. But here, Marvin Graves, that option look, well, you never know. That's Richardson in motion. Touchdown, Syracuse. Marcus Lee. When the offensive line comes off the ball and doesn't allow people to come over the top. You see, just good line surge right now, coming off the ball. Boom, good kick out block by Richardson, and he gets in there. Good power, good power by Marcus Lee. Just keep those feet moving. 
Now the other side, when you do go down there on fourth and one foot and you make it, it gives your fans here in the Carrier Dome a huge lift too. They're right with you all the way now. O'Neal adds the extra point. Marcus leads two possessions and ten points. Field goal for BC and a touchdown for Syracuse. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. By Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. New advanced high-tech formula Quaker State Motor Oil, it's formulated for today's high-tech engines. And Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. 7-3, Syracuse leading Boston College. My dad was an old Quaker State Motor Oil user. Long time ago in the old garage. In I didn't know your dad was Arnold Palmer. No, hey, a long ways from Arnold. In fact, oh. he thought anyone played golf was a sissy. You know? uh, wait a minute, Pops, <laughs> come on. Well, Syracuse was burned down in Texas. Young man, I believe his first name is Mike. It's Adams. Returned a kickoff, and then he hauled a punt back for a touchdown. So this Syracuse special team has been practicing hard. But when you've got O'Neal, you know, you don't get a whole lot of work. Boy, and that, that is a defensive weapon. Here, really, not many kids can kick a ball that well. He's an outstanding kicker and it, an outstanding student. Honor student in biology engineering. I don't even know what you do in biology engineering. That's our next game in the doubleheader today. Notre Dame and Stanford as you run through these teams. A lot of them just underway in the top ten. Nebraska Idol, they've been surprising so far, haven't they? Speaking of surprises, well, here's Boston College. First and ten. Comer. He shows a little flash, doesn't he, Dick? Anthony Comer, he came from the Nassau County Junior College. That's where he transferred to Boston College from. You'll see that Syracuse gets in an even defense and does not cover the center. You'll see that no one on the center. They leave this area open. That is a total change up from their basic defensive scheme. They're trying to balance up to prevent this and they couldn't prevent it. Good blocking. They couldn't get the, the linebacker up to fill that hole. Syracuse with problems on defense. You don't have to be a genius to see that. You see the defensive line for Syracuse is just not making enough tackles. They're making that secondary come up. Kevin Mitchell's the leading tackler, but then you've got the safeties in the corners. And last year it was so much different because they had so much experience at the linebacking spot, they left Mitchell at the nose guard. But when you lose Glenn Young, Garland Hawkins, JoJo Wooden, and then Dan Conley, it's devastating. And they're, you know, they're all redshirt freshmen or just uh, limited experience players in there right now too, but they will get better. Foley. is Clarence Cannon. Great execution by another fine quarterback. Different style quarterback. A very fine passer. A lot of experience. 50 year senior. That time did a nice job with the play action and they beat that double zone down there. The wide receiver got on the safety. Now watch the action. Tough to defense this action. It ties up safety. See, starts one way, frees it. Now he comes out there by himself. See, now the wide receiver is on the safety, running it rather than running on a corner. 36 yards on first down. Darnell Campbell running to the 10 yard line. And I'll tell you, they're having a feast down there in the middle behind their center, Tommy Nalen, paving the way. Well, Coach Coyle, the defensive coordinator for uh, Syracuse, said. He was going to try to get off some of that shoulder defense and get some head up defense there to try to prevent this. But those young kids are getting blocked at the line of scrimmage regardless of where they line up. Last team to score may win this shootout. We haven't seen any defense yet on either side. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kevin Mitchell drop down into a three-point stance where he is an outstanding player, just a good linebacker, not an outstanding one, but an outstanding defensive lineman. What do you think of that strategy employed by Syracuse to take a fine nose man and make him a stand-up linebacker? You're not too happy about that. Well, it's, it's not my philosophy. He didn't have a choice. Coach Pasqualoni didn't have a choice, he feels. But I think before the season's over, you'll see that switch as a young linebacker gains a little experience. But I always felt you weakened two positions by doing that, Brent. Campbell's the lone running back for BC. Eagles on the move. 
Oh, nice defense. That time, there was a fine defensive play by Antonio Anderson. Redshirt freshman number 97 got in and made the best play by a defensive lineman here so far for Syracuse. He read the trap block that time, and when they pulled the trap in, he just moved right across. Now, you'll see, here he is sitting right here. They pulled the trap in, but he reads it and constricts the hole. Now, watch him. See this? Now, watch him read it. Boom, he gets that shoulder down in that hole. Real nice job and good defensive line coaching. Second and eight, and they bring Anthony Comer back into that backfield, and they toss it to him. Comer now running to the flag. Comer to the five-yard line, and he's hit by Tony Jones, the free safety. <laughs> that Comer, I was talking with him yesterday. He says, Coach, you know, I met you when I was six years old. Harold Carmichael introduced me to you a long time ago. I want to go back on Kevin Mitchell because we had an opportunity to ask him whether he likes standing up as a linebacker. Here's what he said. I like it because I don't get as many bodies on me as I do as nose guard, you know, <laughs> like two or three guys at a time and I get to run around a lot. Yeah, Kevin, but when you get those two or three bodies, that loosens up things for the rest of the defense. A timeout being called by Boston College. Foley will go over and talk to the coaching staff. Not a bad coaching matchup next on ABC. Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against Bill Walsh and Stanford, Dick Vermeil. Well, I think we'll see a much better Notre Dame team this week than we saw last week against Purdue. I, I think it's still going to be a very even football game. Comer is the running back. This is third and four. BC can pick up a first down at the one. Foley going to throw for it into the end zone. And it was knocked away from Comer, who slipped out as a receiver. Tony Jones there in that secondary, a very active free safety. Boy, I tell you, you really have to be alert on defense when you're defensing Tom Coughlin's offense. They move around so much and give you a look and change the formations. It's really tough. You've really got to concentrate on defense. So here's Gordon again. He made a 39-yarder on BC's first series. Misses this time. That's a big miss. <laughs> I can remember so many times a field goal kicker missing a field goal. Brent and walking off the field and early in the season he'd walk right toward me toward uh, halfway through the season he'd go hide at the end of the bench <laughs> I always wondered what happened to Tony Franklin I don't know I don't know Dick Vermeil still has nightmares about him you know I never had a field goal kicker kick a field goal in the final seconds of a game and win it I, I had a real negative effect on those guys <laughs> that's Hill in motion for Syracuse leading 7-3 Graves off the option gets it to Richardson oh. and Richardson finally wrestled out by Joe O'Brien but he made BC miss a couple of tackles Monday night NFC AFC showdown Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins coming off that big one against Buffalo will take on the Washington Redskins 9 Eastern time 8 Central here on ABC here college football on a Saturday afternoon Syracuse with the lead Rob Clifford, who was in as the nickel man, comes out. And Richardson is pounded by the middle of that eagle defense down there. Danny Kerr, number 91, making the stop. Danny Kerr did a good job of holding up the point and waiting for the pursuit to get there. Danny, one of the few married football players you see in college football anymore. He and his wife, Melissa, have a one-year-old son and another one on the way. Excuse me, you player. haven't been to Brigham Young lately. <laughs> oh, really? Well, they don't send us out there. Time running out here in the first quarter. Third and three. Syracuse has been lethal on third and fourth down here so far in the early going. This only their second possession. Richardson goes in motion and Graves fires for the first down. Hits Eric Chenoweth, his tight end. Real good poise. First off, very good pass protection. 
but he gets back in his setup position and he allows the pattern to develop. He goes through his progression, number one, number two. I really believe Chenoweth was the number three guy in terms of his progression to throw to. Virginia Tech and West Virginia is a good matchup in the Big East. Virginia Tech striking first in that one. Texas Tech with an early lead on AM. That would be a shocker, but it's early. Graves and finally wrestled down by Brian Howlett. You know, I'll tell you this, he wanted to stop when the pattern was taken away backside, and he wanted to throw it back to Hill, and Hill was loafing. Now you're going to see Marvin Graves say something, but Hill was loafing on the pattern. First quarter comes to an end. Graves and Syracuse leading it. 7-3. Nothing has meant more to the economy of Syracuse than this Carrier Dome, which was opened in 1980. The Orangemen win 68% of the time in this building. Their remaining games here in Syracuse are sold out. They, of course, also use it for basketball. Second and 15 to start the second quarter for Syracuse. The Orangemen leading Boston College 7-3. Off a of fake to Richardson, sets the screen, and they went back to Richardson. He had to reach up in the air and extend for the ball, and it not much of a play there. And Dick, what about the numbers from the first quarter? Well, Boston College is dominating in total yards at 125 to 76, both running the ball real well, efficient, and you can see that Syracuse is doing what they want to do, control the football and keep their defense off the field with a nine-minute to a five-minute advantage right there. The adjustments made on the defensive side by Boston College early are certainly paying off. That was another five-yard loss. So this is going to be third and 20 yards for Syracuse. The shotgun look for Graves. He has a strong arm. Fires over the middle and complete to Shelby Hill, his favorite target. And he is short of the first down, a 16-yard gain. So Syracuse will punt. They set up in a double zone look, Brent, meaning, see, they have, they have two deep safeties and the corners all rolled up underneath, and then he works underneath it. See, now they work into the zones, everyone playing loose in there. See, now Shelby Hill to the right side of the green. He settled in that hole between the safeties and rolled up corner. Good job. Well, O'Neill will punt it. And Kenyatta Watson, who had a fine day the last time we saw him returning kickoffs against Miami, is standing inside the BC 20-yard line. BC has to get a big lift, and it ran the timeout. That's going to be a penalty, and that's another mistake here on one of the special teams. Both schools have had problems with their special teams. Boston lost to uh, Northwestern, not executing on special teams. Syracuse tied Texas not executing on special teams and they really emphasize them but sometimes young football teams just don't take it serious enough until they either get beat or tied for not executing them well you certainly don't want to take a five yard penalty here sometimes when you're going to punt it into the end zone you do but there was no question this time nice punt high Watson at the 22 yard line and he is ambushed right away Great coverage, Kirby Dardar, the running back, getting down there initially. There he is, 42, did a great job. Excellent job. Bob Casillo, the special teams coach, I think has made his point in regard to coverage teams. Great intensity, then discipline, and coming to balance before you make the tackle so he can't juke you and sidestep you. All being coached by the special teams coach. That's tonight. Beverly Hills Cop and the Kanish tonight. But right now, we've got him at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Here's Foley with Mitchell stepping in motion. This is Campbell, and he's wrestled down. So there, a little bit more aggressive as Todd comes right across the line of scrimmage and makes a stop. Now let me go back to prime time because one of your favorites, Eddie Murphy, is back. Just the way you love him in the original... Beverly Hills Cop on the ABC Saturday Night Movie. Now, folks, that won't be edited for network television. Go away. Ah. Then the commish comes up all tonight on ABC. Here now it is second down and 11 for BC. Foley handing off to Darnell Campbell. 
and Todd again. So Chip Todd, number 57, starting to step up here on the defensive side. The Orangemen needed someone to answer the call, and it's going to be Todd. Brent, it's been my experience in coaching. As a young team gains a little confidence during the ball game, they shut you out, make you punt a series. They start getting better, and their techniques get better, and their intensity goes to another level. And that's what's happening right now. Third and nine for BC. Pocket held up. The hit is tight end Mitchell with Daryl Parker hanging on. You give Foley First time. Down. You give Foley time to throw the ball, he'll eat you alive. Sometimes he gets a little too aggressive and assuming the responsibility for winning the game all by himself. But I don't fault him for that. As he matures in the NFL, I think he'll learn that he can't do that. But you give him time, he'll eat you alive. Well, the crowd really in it. Homer and Campbell are the running backs. Play fake to Comer. Foley is right on the money. Comes back to Mitchell. And Mitchell to the 45-yard line. That's going to be close for another first down, isn't it? Mitchell's a kid out of Michigan, the Detroit area there, Brent. It wasn't recruited by the Michigan schools. Not big enough, not strong enough, not, not fast enough. Comes to Boston College and proves them all wrong. He's a player. Second down. And this is Comer. Gets the first. Comes across midfield to the Syracuse 48. Julie Moran. This move by Boston College has suddenly quieted the crowd here in a Carrier Dome. One of the problems for BC in the Dome has always been the noise factor. So here's what they did to remedy the situation. They developed some hand signals and some silent counts. And last week during practice, they put two loudspeakers on the line of scrimmage and they blasted ACDC as loud as possible. And they thought that this would help them simulate the crowd noise. Dick Vermeil, the song they chose to play, your ACDC favorite all night long. <laughs> you know that, don't you? Oop. Flea flicker. Foley. invite ACDC to the banquet in the offseason, Dick. <laughs> yeah, you know, my son-in-law, Steve, manages those guys. You know, I, I'll have to admit, though, I really don't listen to them. I really don't. <laughs> don't tell him that. That's a 48-yard scoring strike and the big play. Clarence Cannon from Glenn Foley on the flea flicker. Suddenly, the Eagles of Boston College take the lead. Coach Coughlin and quarterback Foley pull a rabbit out of the hat. Thank you, ACDC. 48-yard flea flicker. Foley to Cannon gives BC the lead over Syracuse. Second lead they've enjoyed in this game. Kicking a field goal on their first series for a 3-0 lead, which did not hold up long as Syracuse drove in for its touchdown. So we've had to change hands here a couple of times in the second quarter of the Carrier Dome. Beckley kicking it off with Dardar and Richardson back deep for the Orange men. And there's some unease in the Carrier Dome right now. This is not how they envisioned this season was going to unfold. It's Dardar. To the 27. That was certainly worth another look, Dick. But that kind of action has a real effect. As you watch the corners back at the corner here, the safety here, you'll notice another safety appear from the right side of your screen. Say so they get it back. The motion attracts attention. Now they're looking into the backfield. Darnell Campbell flips it back. Now you see the react. Hold it right there. Freeze it. See? Freeze it right there. These guys have their back to the line of scrimmage chasing, trying to get to the football. That's really tough action. Then the ball is thrown right on the money. First and ten 
Marcus Lee checks into the Syracuse backfield. Graves on the quarterback keeper on that draw play. And John Saunders, what's going on with Mississippi State right now? Well, Brent, you'll recall last year, Mississippi State picked off Florida passers five times following an interception. Todd Jordan goes 52 yards to Chris Jones. He walks it to the end zone. They lead it seven to nothing. We'll keep you updated. Brent, back to you. Holy swamp. What a shocker that would be here, John. 10-7 BC with the lead on the flea flicker. Marcus Lee and Kirby Dardar are the backs. Now Graves trapped on that option and suddenly BC's defense doing an excellent job as Mike Mamula cut him off. Well, I tell you, Steve Sabo, the defensive coordinator, is an excellent coordinator with a lot of experience and he makes adjustments as he's going in the ball game. Right there he had him in an even defense, a 4-4 look, and had a man playing a wider technique that can get in the quarterback's face just a little bit quicker. They're coming across the line, Dick, and making Graves commit earlier than he wants to. Against Texas, for example, he got further down the line before he had the toss. Third and six out of the shotgun. Against good pressure, he fires complete to Shelby Hill for a first down. Nice job by Shelby Hill working underneath the double coverage. The corner rolled up, he burst underneath the, co the coverage, and then real good pass protection. Now you watch Marvin Graves in the middle of your screen. Good time and really nice poise. Now watch him set there, bounce, 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 poise, let it happen, step up, fire, right in there. See short coverage and deep coverage, and Hill found the hole in between the two. Nice job. Kamara and Shorter with the defensive backs trying to cover Hill. Now the wishbone look. Graves will step back and down he goes with Boyd making the sack. What he wanted to do was throw back to Terry Richardson going out the backside of the, you know, play action one way. See, and here's Richardson going to sneak down the sideline. And he wanted to get the ball back to him and look at, was he there or was he there? See, but he couldn't get it. Good, good hustle by Steve Boyd. Boy, he had a big one if he could have gotten it off. And Lee couldn't block him. And Boyd making a fine stop for a six-yard loss on the sack. Second and 16. Off the fake. And they were coming again. Relentless pressure, Mamula again. Mamula and Page. Mamula is the most talented young football player in that defensive front, Brad. He's only a sophomore, 6'5", 230, and he has natural pass rush instincts and abilities, and they're going to move him around through the ball game and let him be on one tackle, let him be on a guard, move him over there. Good job of pass rushing. B.C. Turning There's it Steve up a Sabo. notch. Steve Sabo, the defensive coordinator right there. Excellent football coach. Third and 19. Mamula. Beautiful twisting move by Mamula. A penalty flag is down. Boston College defense on fire. Well, they came into the game, Brent, number two in sacks with 10. Offense. See, when a quarterback holds the ball that long back there in the pocket, sooner or later the protection starts to break down. Then an offensive lineman is more apt to grab and hold on to somebody. See, right there you see number 79, Kyle Adams. Spin move by Mamula back inside. Excellent move right there. Talented pass rusher. Three straight sacks by the Eagle defense. Forcing O'Neal to punt. Watson back deep. They blocked three in a row last week, but this time they run into the punter. A penalty against Boston College. They could not get it blocked this time. Now last week, they blocked three consecutive punts against Temple. And this time, they were coming again. 
but they charged into O'Neill. Now it's dependent if they call it roughing or running into. If it's roughing, it's an automatic first down. If it's running into, it's only a five-yard penalty. You'll see O'Neill right here take the ball. He gets it. He's form fitting it. They come right up underneath him like that and get to his legs like that. They're going to call that roughing. And it's going to give Syracuse a first, first down. down. Not a good time to attempt to block a punt, in my opinion. What about you, Dick? I really believe, Brent, when you have momentum, you don't do anything that can turn it around. I think that's a coaching mistake most of the time. I know I've made the same one many times. Well, let's take you back last week. Boston College was reeling. They'd lost to Miami and then Northwestern. From the outside, Grice was coming. Greg Grice, the wide receiver, he blocked two in a row. And then they shored up on the outside. And so BC sends the rush right down the middle and Shorter picks off the third one. And this time they fail and it gives Syracuse a first down at its 45 yard line. They run the option. Graves hangs on. But suddenly those holes that were there on that first series, Dick, are not there against that BC defense. They're doing a good job now of coming down the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to have to, Brent, establish the fullback up inside and try to slow down that pursuit because the action looks the same, except he gives the ball to the fullback once in a while. That'll slow him down just a little bit. Lee is the fullback. Kirby Dardar still the tailback. Boy, Mamula 59 is showing us some major league moves, hasn't he, so far for the BC. Well, there now they get it into Dardar's hands. And you can see that defense starting to come aggressively. That was Terrence Wiggins, 49, who flashed over there. David Jones, a linebacker, also in on it. And he popped Graves. So Graves takes a hit. Boy, he flipped this out with his left hand, and he is a right-hander. Watch him go down the line of scrimmage, and David Jones, who has the quarterback responsibility of making him pitch. Now, this is making the quarterback pay. Wham! He hits him right up underneath the chin. Oh, that hurts. Third and five. Ball at midfield. Completes it anyway to Kirby Dardar. First down, Syracuse. Boy, he hangs in with Boyd coming into his face. The one thing being an option quarterback does for a quarterback, Brent, is it makes them tough. They learn to take hits going down the line of scrimmage and pitching, and they don't mind taking a hit when they're throwing the football. He's a tough young man. The ball at the BC 41 yard line. Graves, 7 of 8 for 58 yards. Foley, the big one, that flea flicker for a score. Come back with Marcus Lee, the fullback. He didn't make many yards on that, but that will help him run the option. They like to and want to today run the option to the strong side of the field and then throw off that action back to the weak side. So far, they haven't been able to get the option going to the strong side of the field. What was Florida State favored by? About 30 points today? I don't look at those things. I don't know, Brent. <laughs> Informational purposes only, folks. <laughs> Second and seven. complete to the 27 and Jason Wilson hey you know when you come into Syracuse and you go out for a little pasta at Grimaldi's you never know who you're gonna run into Julie but thank coach Frank Layton for that nice wine last night Brent says thank you for the wine last night and he wants to know what you're doing down here in Syracuse <laughs> well you know this is one of my favorite parts of the country uh, Julie and and some friends here invite I was here on a speaking engagement some friends invited me to come over and see the ball game and See the facilities here, and I'll tell you, it's great. Syracuse is great. This is America. Great game. If the sun would only come out, this would be perfect. <laughs> Let's take a look at this play. All right, then we'll come right back to you. If the sun would come out. First and ten. The fullback again. 
to the 22-yard line. Okay, Julie. All right, Frank, you've got Malone back. You've got Stockton back. How are the Jazz going to be this season? Well, we're going to be better. You know, there's no doubt that the Olympics tied them out last year. John Stockton, of course, coming off a broken leg. But we picked up Tom Chambers, a local uh, fellow who I think is going to help us. He gives us a little more flexibility than we've had before, and we think we're going to have a healthy mark eating. The Jazz should be pretty good, but we're in a tough conference. Brent wants to know if you've moved up on Blackburn's best dress list. <laughs> no, and I don't trust that guy yet. You know what I mean? He pulled that one on me. Blackburn's on my down list, Brent. <laughs> okay, Frank. Thanks for stopping by. Frank. All right. Thanks, Julie. Second down. Dardar crosses the 20 to the 18. I believe he's short of a first down. Well, there he is. He's every bit of America. <laughs> he's done a piece of work, isn't he? <laughs> he really is. Hey, he's a great speaker. So the ball sitting at the BC. Well, it's inside of the 20, isn't it, right now? This is going to be a third down. I think right here, Brent, you think two downs for the first down right now. Well, two, two yards to go. Down. Let's see how they play it. It's closer to two, folks, I believe. Off the wishbone. No question. They only needed one. Dardar. John Saunders. How about Michigan? The Wolverines. What's up? Well, Brenna, look at Tyrone Wheatley, who had over 200 yards rushing against Iowa last year. Five-yard touchdown run, barely touched. Michigan leading Iowa 7-0. Meantime, Virginia Tech leading West Virginia 7-0 in the Big East. Brent, back to you. Yeah, John, Virginia Tech, surprisingly good team. Doesn't get much notoriety. They played well this year. Here's Syracuse on the move now, trying to regain the lead again. The ball is at the 14-yard line. First down. And they are sticking with Kirby Dardar, the 180-pound junior tailback right now. And the other thing they're doing, Brent, see, they're establishing that inside running game, and that has helped them move the football. Both of those fullbacks can run real well. Al Wooten's a big guy, and Marcus Lee is even a little more nifty inside. BC's defensive line being so aggressive the best way to handle that aggression is to run right at it and let your offensive lineman deliver that initial blow offensive linemen certainly like that don't they i'm running down here it's been a rather quick first half graves with that option look now dardar dardar to the corner dardar to the one foot line Brent, what happened this time is the discipline broke down to the right side of your screen. You'll see they end up with two men on the quarterback. Now the fake inside, Bamula takes the, gets the block right there. Now you'll see two people going for the quarterback. You see Shorter right there and no one on the pitch man. Breakdown in discipline. Boy, that's tough when you do that. First and goal for Syracuse. takes it up over the top no signal so he's a little short of that goal line second and goal for the Orangemen see the other thing that happens Brent within this whole series by running the fullback inside then come it then you fake the ball to him inside and come off with the option you freeze those people inside but the one play that turned this game around the, was the attempted block yeah. on the punt that and gave we, a fresh series of downs this is the 18th play coming We've seen that many times over the years. Marcus Lee, that's Richardson. Wooten's in there. There's Richardson. Graves on it, gonna be third and goal. Time running down, they'll have to use a timeout. Stop the clock with the I final think, seconds here in the first half. I think Graves pulled out early. I really do, Brent. Well, that's the next game in our doubleheader here on ABC. Notre Dame and Stanford from the West Coast. And coming up also in just a few seconds, we'll have the Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders scores and highlights. We'll look ahead to next week's Miami-Florida State game and a special profile of Florida State kicker Scott Bentley. Coming up now will be third and goal after this misstep. You'll see right here the ball never got up. Hold it right there. You'll see the ball right there. Normally when that happens, 
the center is moving away and the quarterback's hands are not staying up in the tail section and the ball ends up in the air like it did right there. This has been a 10 minute drive for Syracuse. Third and goal right now. And a whistle. Did the time run out on him? Or Santa Bria of Boston College called the timeout? Good move. At the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. 19th play on this drive coming up. Earlier, Syracuse scored on a 16-play drive. Two timeouts in 19 seconds. You've got to watch the quarterback draw anytime Marvin Graves gets inside the five. Wishbone look. The pitch. Touchdown, Syracuse. Marcus Lee walks in. That's his second touchdown of the day. He sacrificed his body on that pitch. You'll see a nice strong fake here. Now the fullback's up tight. You'll see a strong fake in here like that. And he comes off and sacrifices his body on the pitch. Now watch this. See, now that makes people acknowledge it inside. See, Brian Howlett's working tight. He gets the block there, right there by Richardson. Just a little screen block. Boy, see, tight formation, constrict the defense, freeze him inside, and get it on the perimeter. Touchdown. play 72 yard touchdown and this was the play that did it Graves the senior quarterback coming down the line boom, <laughs> takes the pop and gets it into Lee's hands and again Syracuse leads it's 14 10 well you so many different formations and variations of options here it is the wishbone see the Discipline good there and taking the quarterback, but they got the man that was supposed to take the trail back blocks So there's no one on him. They have him outnumbered. It's a touchdown Nice job there by Marcus Lee. He likes that That's why sometimes it's hard to evaluate how good a running back is in an option offense because you're out there And there's no one to make the play if it's executed perfectly Boy, that's a big big mental play as well as a physical play to score with 14 seconds left and take the lead emotionally that gives you a real lift at halftime there's a fine football coach ladies and gentlemen any one of us would be very proud to have our sons play for this guy ten minutes on that drive and it was assisted by a roughing the punter on fourth down which kept it alive and that's the kind of decision you go back on Sunday as a coach and you're flying home after the game but if it ended up costing you the game and you say geez I shouldn't have called a, a punt rush short man feels it that's Dwight Shirley tackled at the 29 yard line seven seconds to go They have one timeout left, Brent, and uh, so they'll probably try to get the ball down and out of bounds in, in front of the zones and then see if they can't uh, call timeout right away. But, uh, seven seconds, a little tough. Been so long since they've handled it. They forget what to do with it. They're going to run the ball out. Yep. And it's Comer running out the final seconds of the first half. Syracuse leads it 14 to 10. That's significant. In their last 85 games, they are 42 2 and 2 when leading at the half. Coming up, it's John Saunders from our New York studios.
Good one going here in the Dome in Syracuse with Dick Vermeil and Julie Moran. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you back. Coach 1410, Boston College with a wonderful flea flicker in the first half. Oh, I know. They caught the safeties watching a man in motion to get their attention. Then they drew him up with the, the flip the ball back, then back to the quarterback. And here's Cannon going in for six points. See the safeties will get involved in defense in the run. Then it's flip back. Then... Foley does what he does best, throws the ball right on the money, big play. Then a strange decision. Momentum on your side, they went after Pat O'Neill. Yeah, I, I would question this, and I'm sure that the coaching staff will second-guess themselves on this, too. When you gain momentum, leave it alone. Don't do anything to foul it up. And then they drove for 10 minutes. And it, controlled the clock, and just what Boston College does not want Syracuse to do is control the clock. Well, here are the numbers from the first half as Beckley is ready to kick it off and that certainly illustrates what you're saying Dick. Here it is right here you can see that there, there they are plus 13 minutes look at this plus 21 plays and Tom Coughlin said the one thing we cannot do is to allow Syracuse to control the ball and that's what happened. Three drives for that much time 21 minutes and 40 seconds and two touchdowns. Syracuse will get some more minutes here with the initial possession of the second half. High and very short on the kickoff. Fielded at the 15-yard line. Richardson to the 26-yard line where Marvin Graves and the Orangemen will go back to work. Two short touchdowns by Marcus Lee. Put Syracuse ahead. They trailed 3-0 on fourth and a foot. They scored for the first time to take a 7-3 lead. Then the flea flicker put BC ahead and finally it was 14-10 on Lee's second touchdown that 19 play drive that consumed better than 10 minutes of the clock in the second quarter Richardson is the tailback Hill is the motion man Luton is the fullback gets the initial carry to the 28 yard line Timmy Morabito, the inside defensive tackle, and sometimes no guard on the center's nose. He's an aggressive young man. There he is, right in the center of your screen. Boom, he's, he's they're not going to block him right there. They're going to kick him out, see, with an offensive lineman trapping him. And he got up, he got trapped. Interesting chess match between these two coaching staffs. Second and eight. Graves going to swing it to Richardson. Richardson hit by Eric Shorter, the strong safety. Well, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, is just an excellent football coach, and he also coaches the offensive line. And this offensive line has really improved from the early in the season to now. And yes, the season is very young, but these guys have shown a lot of improvement, and they demonstrated that in the first half, Brent. Good poise, make very few mistakes, and that, that's a high-risk offense, an option offense. Shotgun look here on third and five. Richardson up on a wing, gives Graves an extra receiver, fires to the other side, incomplete. Harrison, the wide receiver, shorter and Reed over there with coverage for BC. Well, you know, they don't like the third and long situation. This is the Syracuse offensive staff didn't like it, didn't want to be in many of them. I bet they don't go after this punt. <laughs> I don't think they will either. Watson deep for BC. Standing at the Eagle 27-yard line. Nice punt. Boy, he hit that one. He drives Watson back to the nine. Why O'Neill's one of the better punters and Watson to the 22-yard line. So we'll take a break with Syracuse leading 14 to 10. Back at the Carrier Dome with Dick Vermeil and Mayor McCoy. Oh, I'm sorry, you decided not to run for mayor. Coach, it's always a pleasure to see you. The reason why, Brent, is because I, the survey showed that I wouldn't win. So I just... <laughs> You'd win any election that you ran. Hey, keep here. that headset on. Stick with us here for a while. I need First it. and Thank ten. You. I need all the help I can get there, Coach. Not you, Dick Vermeil. You're the best. <laughs> Foley 
hands it off to Darnell Campbell, who is the tailback into the heart of that defense. And uh, Coach, what do you think about Syracuse this year? I think they're still trying to find out who they are. Uh, I think offensively, they're just, uh, they're just a beautiful team to watch. They've got to get their special teams and their defense squared away, and they're doing that each game. They're getting better. But they got to keep winning, and they'll be fine. What a, beautiful, what a beautiful offensive series today. Both teams. Seven yards for the first down. Foley under pressure. Fires complete. And hits his tight end, Gordon Laro. That Gordon. tight end, Dick Vermeil, is very active for the Eagles. You know, I think they uh, have gotten away a little bit from their three tight end package, Coach Mack. And that's really the best thing they do in the running game because they do so many other things within that same package of personnel, those three tight ends. It's tough to defend. I thought sure they'd be doing more of it because with the young linebackers, they could get them yeah. making adjustments that they can't make. Right. Third They're moving end. the ball so well that uh, it's a beautiful offensive day for both teams. Foley with Mitchell trying to come hard. Beautiful catch. What a fine catch that was by Ivan Boyd. Ivan Boyd worked up behind the rolled up corner. They went a double zone and he rolled up behind him. You'll see to the right side of your screen, the pattern takes a little time to develop. The safeties are going to divide and take 50% of the field. You'll see Tom Jones in the middle there playing his 50%. See the deep safety right there? Hold it right there. Freeze it right there. You'll see this man had rotated up. See, now he's trying to fall, fall back in and make the play. You didn't know, Coach Mack, I got my own Dickie V. <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> First and ten. Here's Comer to the 47-yard line. And uh, Coach Mack, Comer showing a little flash there for BC in this well, game. I, I think that uh, I think he's gonna, he, he's the one that got the whole thing started and, and got the defense from Syracuse re really rocking on the back of their feet. Uh, as I said before, and I want to say again, I see beautiful offenses by both teams. It's exciting there, but the defensive coaches have now got to make the adjustments of the second half. That's what I said in the first half. One thing I wouldn't want to do today is be defensive coordinator for either coach. Yeah, it's, it's a great job by both teams, offensively. Foley going underneath and hitting Comer coming out of the backfield. See, that's a new phase of the offense that Tom Coughlin has added. A little bit of an underneath program. Remember Brent and doing the Miami game early, they used it a lot. They're very much a vertical stretch team. Get receivers downfield. And now they've included a little package where they're just dropping it for the higher percentage completion. I think if, uh, Tom Coughlin has done a great job of putting the pressure on anybody's defense. I think he's a great coach. And uh, everybody in Boston is proud of him, I'm sure. Third and four. Fumble by Mitchell going out of bounds. Did they wrap it up in time? I don't think so. They're going to give it to him. Oh, my. They're going to give Syracuse the ball. Oh, my goodness. It didn't look like uh, he had it in time from up here. And I can understand why Coach Coughlin's upset. But it didn't look like it from here. Wow. Now, we're pretty flat angled. Mitchell gets it tucked away right there. Good stripping job behind him. See him pull on that arm? Nice job by the defender. Now, the ball's in the air. Here comes Bevel, number three. Oh, oh good he, call. Yeah, he had it. I don't know if he had possession. Yeah, well, that's hard for the guy behind it to see, but he's making the right call because he sees it all. Yeah. That's the guy behind fumble. it makes the call. Yeah. He you got to have a little one. luck to win in this game. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Bryce Bevel on the recovery. Graves off a play fake. Firing complete on first down to Kirby Dardar. Kirby Coach, Dardar getting a lot of minutes here, Mac. Yes, he is. Have you ever been around a quarterback that does a better job of faking than this young man, Marvin Graves? What poise, and you know what I'm talking about. Watch his fake. Well, I think, you know, he's in his fifth year. Foley's in his fifth year. You're seeing college football as best two fifth year quarterback. Yeah, and they just great point. I know. He never looks panicked. I, and I, I love the way he throws the ball too. Yeah, that's got do. a gun. That do make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dardar had moved to the wrong spot. Graves brings him back. Did the time expire? The 25 second clock. Too much time. I hope that you guys Good enjoy game. this, Brent, because uh, look, we were here in Penn State. We didn't have a crowd like this. Syracuse football is back under Paul Pasqualoni. The place is full. 
I imagine you fellas in college football have got to love a show like this. This oh, is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And a great place to play, a great town to play it in. Two wonderful schools playing against each other. Are you sure you're not running for mayor? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Max, thanks for dropping by. Kid. It's always a pleasure to see you. Go ABC. Yeah, okay. nice to see you see later, you, Max. Right. Now, second down and ten. Here's Graves, keeps it on the option, twists free, and steps out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Watch him come down the line of scrimmage. He makes the strong inside fake. Now watch him make the strong inside fake on the option. Now watch, and there it is. He made that strong fake right now. Now watch what he does is with right arm here. He flips it. See, he pretend like he's going to flip it, and that moves Danny Kerr 91 to go take the pitch. He doesn't pitch it. <laughs> oh my God! What a gift, huh? What an athlete! First down, Syracuse. Ball at the 46. Orangemen leading Boston College, 14 to 10. Fullback Marcus Lee, who has scored both of the Syracuse touchdowns in midfield, actually going to be spotted at the 49 yard line. They have obviously started to utilize that inside running attack to try to just slow down the pursuit because in the first quarter, those linebackers were really flying out of there. Complete. He threw that one away. The screen could not be set up well defense. Speaking of Graves, uh, Julie Moran, you're with his roommate. That's right. No stranger to the limelight here in Syracuse, uh, Lawrence Moten. Now, Marvin was a pretty good basketball player, but he doesn't do too well against you when you play for the dishes, does he? <laughs> well, yeah, it was a little misunderstanding about, you know, who was turning was to wash the dishes. And uh, he decided that he wanted to play, well, you know, best out of seven game series so you know I told him I didn't want to do it to him but you know we played and I won four straight so. let's take a look at this play here Lawrence okay. third down for Graves and the Orangemen leading 14-10 here comes the rush Boyd pummeling in him again with another sack for the Eagles way back at the 35 yard line Julie, he needed Moten out there in his backfield. He did, Brent Lawrence. I got to ask you about the sock thing. Now you both wear your socks pulled all the way up to your knees. What's going on there? Well, basically, that's something we've been doing, you know, basically since high school. You know, it's a little DC traditional thing, and uh, basically, you know, it's been working. We've been playing pretty well so far since we've been here. So, you know, we're not planning on pulling them down anytime soon. Brent <laughs> wants to know if Marvin snores. <laughs> no comment, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Lawrence. Thank you, Julie. Pat O'Neill in punting for Syracuse. Actually, I wish Julie wanted to know that. She put my name on it. <laughs> O'Neill. Here's Watson at the 15-yard line. Oh, is this O'Neill got a leg? Watson, though, spins away this time. Picks up a block. Fine return. What a good matchup that is. Pat O'Neill and Kenyatta Watson. When we come back, it'll be BC's first possession of the second half. CFA College Football on ABC brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the new Chevy cars for 1994. Allied signals, Autolite spark plugs, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. Well, a look at the AP, top ten, Word, Florida and Mississippi State now tied down in Gainesville. A lot of teams in action later today. Gives you an idea of some of the matchups. And tonight. Oh, Louisville, Pittsburgh. A lot of folks, including Dick Vermeil. Love Louisville in that one. We'll see. Foley's 10 of 12 for 175. Hands off to Campbell. Good job by Kevin Mitchell, Brent. is getting better at that linebacker position. Don't be surprised if we see him down in a three-point stance before this ball game's over. 
not only in nickel situations but on running downs because they're grooming a young linebacker named Kendrick Thomas, number 31, that we might see appear in there as a linebacker. Second and nine. Blitz is picked up, bobbled, and Mitchell couldn't hang on. Boy, and Rice Bevel giving him a workout. Good tight coverage, excellent throw, right where it has to be thrown, and this young man, Mitchell, does not drop a ball very often. He has to make that play if they're going to come back here and win this football game. You don't get many opportunities to make them against tight coverage. You've got to catch it. A costly fumble also moments ago. Virginia Tech still ahead of West Virginia. The crowd steps it up now. Mitchell was down that time, complete to Clarence Cannon. Cannon finally wrestled out by Tony Jones. They have put Mitchell down in that nickel package as they have most of the season, but that was a 26-yard gain, and Foley is now thrown for more than 200 yards. Credit Mark Borelli, the right guard, and Ben Velischka, the right tackle. Now watch these two tackles right here. Handle the cross charge properly and give the quarterback, Foley, time to go ahead and watch him switch it here. See him? He gets off of there and he gets gives him that throwing lane. Did a nice job of handling that stunt to allow the time to throw it downfield. Now Comer off a of fake. Foley's going to fire on first down. And he does into the hands of Mitchell who hangs on this time. Nate Hemsley there defensively and it's a first down. Eagles on the move. Kevin Coyle, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, told me, Brent, he did not want to allow Foley to get in rhythm throwing and boy he's in rhythm you can't throw it any better than that because we've already had one drop so I mean if you can't do it any better they're going to have to come with some kind of a blitzes to get some pressure on him. Foley starting to light up that secondary and he is finding Mitchell again for still another first down at the Syracuse 20. They're staying in the zone coverages the receivers releasing are coming off, they're reading the zones, and then breaking to the little open area, and the ball is there in time. Excellent quarterbacking by Glenn Foley. Coach Coughlin showing the pass much more on this drive. He has featured it. He has a hot quarterback. Foley's in rhythm. Now they'll come back with Comer on the toss, patiently picking his daylight, and gets inside the 10-yard line. Excellent blocking by Pete Mitchell and the tight end. He worked the defender out and opened the lane up inside. Now, you'll see what I'm talking about here. Mitchell to the left side of your screen here. See him right here? He's going to come off and do this, and they work outside, and the play breaks up underneath it. Here he comes. Now, watch him reach out. Now, he maintains contact. See him right here? Now, they turn up inside. Good ceiling there. Laro's leading. There's the running lane. And Todd could not get off his block to make the stop. They'll come right back. Homer on a beautiful cut. He's a fine, instinctive runner, this young man, who's a J.C. transfer. Bevel and Jones again forced to make that tackle. Not enough stops being made by the front line for Syracuse. They're starting to block him up there, Brent. They're starting to block him pretty good. And this offensive line has really improved. Now, Anthony Comer did not play very much the first couple ball games. But he came into this game after a big game last week. There's Coach Major, the offensive line coach. An excellent offensive line coach, but Comer came in with 171 yards, averaging 10.1. A little more speed in that backfield now. Foley calls timeout. Second down at the Syracuse five-yard line. Coach Mazur is as good an offensive line coach as there is in college football. So we'll right, be right back. BC with a golden opportunity. Second and goal. Coughlin nervous over there on the BC sideline, well aware how important this series is for the Eagles. Homer is the tailback. Shirley checks into the backfield. They're going to try Comer behind Shirley. Homer blasts his way to the four and no more. It's going to be third and goal. A little bit tentative there, Brent. When you're going down for the corner of the end zone as a tailback, not a lot of experience yet with Boston College, as you said earlier. 
but he was waiting for things to happen. Down there, you explode and you make them happen. He was a little tentative taking that ball upfield. You know, I think I would have Darnell Campbell in there. Right? You know, he leads the Big East in scoring touchdowns. He's sitting on the bench. Homer, the lone running back. Foley's going to throw on third down. Incomplete. It's fourth and goal. The ball at the four-yard line. Good defense. Field goal coming on. The Boston College has done two things real well, Brent. They lost momentum at the start of the uh, end of the first half. They come out and play real good defensive series, get the ball back, and now they've moved the ball all the way down and making a field goal. Two good things that help you mentally. I remember, though, in that opener against Miami, I think it was at the end of the first half, they didn't get in down there at the two-yard line. You've got to be efficient. You're only going to get at so many opportunities down I agree here to with score you. a touchdown. I agree with you. Sometimes you're going to have too good a field goal kicker, and it influences the plays you run, but that's not the situation here. He normally likes to get the ball in there running the ball. So they took the delay to back it up a little bit for Gordon, who's one of two. He missed from an angle earlier in the first half. So you may not have to unbalance your formation down here with your offensive line now if you move that ball back further. He made a 39-yarder. It was the first points of the game and missed from 23. Left-footed kicker. And they have unbalanced the line to the right to the wide field, so the ball will pass over the center of the protection. 29-yarder. And he's two of three. It's a one-point game. Time remaining in a rather quick ball game here in Syracuse. Four minutes and 19 seconds in the third quarter. You know, I keep mentioning about the quality of coaches uh, in this stadium, Brent. You just can't help it because we go all around the country and Tom Coughlin and, and Coach Paul Pasqualoni, these two guys do as good a job as the best in the country. They really do great jobs of coaching and they have great uh, discipline within their programs and they're both very intense people. When you watch them coach on the field, I mean, they are in your face. And uh, I, sometimes I think it shakes the kids up a little bit, but it, I, it's good, it, it, it's good for them. They learn how to handle a little adversity and, uh, and, and do things properly. Coffin could take your team. If he beats your team with his team, he could take your team then and beat his team with it. That's the quality of coach he is. Well, at Northwestern, we'll keep our coach. <laughs> hey, I watch the Northwestern Boston College tapes. Brent, you got a reason to smile, you know. I'm but I wouldn't get too you. optimistic. You know? NFL guys <laughs> always stick together. I'm just dealing. <laughs> Coach Barnett's done a fine job He's there. He's done a you. great job. However, Ohio State looms today. <laughs> you know, Ohio State might be the best team we've seen, right? They were pretty good that night. They I'll were tell you pretty that. good. George Hill, our uh, statistician, even nods, and we really respect his opinion. <laughs> High short kickoff. Get it! Should try to recover. That's a live ball. Uh, it's out of bounds. You can't kick it off on the, uh, yeah. on the kickoff. Kickoff. Out of bounds by the kicking team. So the offense will trot onto the field. And the ball will be spotted at the 35-yard line. And there's one you don't want to miss, huh? Add noon, Miami and Florida State. That's the wide right ball. And next week, they'll play it in Tallahassee. And also, following that, Dick and I will have the Michigan-Michigan State game for many of you. We'll also be covering Oklahoma-Texas in a Pac-10 game. Florida State starting to open it up in the second half on Georgia Tech. Syracuse here leading by a point. Braves and a wishbone look. Second and 11. Took a one-yard loss when he pounced on it. Outsmarted himself there, Brent. See, he got up there, saw the defense audible. Then the defense changed and went back. <laughs> and he lost his concentration 
on taking the snap properly. That's the second time they've had a That's problem a on a time. snap exchange. You know, I worked with an old-time uh, head football coach named Sid Gilman. If a quarterback and center exchange ever went awry like that one, he would absolutely have a heart attack on the practice field. Braves going to throw. Oh, pass interference. Incomplete, though. It's not picked up. Walker, the intended target, and Graves is complaining that he was interfered with. I thought he was, Brent. Uh, I thought uh, Mike Reed, out of Salesianum High School in Wilmington, Delaware, came up aggressively. You'll see him right here. Here he is right here. Now watch him as he moves. Comes into the ball. See if there's the ball out in front of him. He's definitely making contact. There's no question. No That's question. interference. No question. No question. Oh, it was interference all the way. I'm rather surprised they blew that one. But this crew has not made many mistakes today. Now, a big third down from the shotgun. Pressure, Graves running away from it, but he'll be short of the first down. Tackle was made by Terrence Wiggins, the free safety. Mike Mamula, again, number 59, coming hard outside on Kyle Adams, the offensive right tackle. Plushed him and pushed him up inside. Then he got help from the rest of the rush and made him scramble out of there. Good pass rush by Mike Mamula. Now here comes that matchup again. O'Neal, if he's not the best punter in college football, he's certainly one of the best. And Watson has shown it to Ash as a return man. He's saying, look at this. Holy mackerel. Oh, there it goes. Back to the one. He's going to try it. Gets a block. Looks for an alley on the outside. Should have never fielded that ball. But it was fun. Hey, I'll tell you this. If you're being coached by Coach Coughlin and you field the ball on the one-yard line, you better get it to the 20-yard line because you're going to have to walk home. <laughs> what a boomer. This kid has a fine career ahead of him. Here he is, a senior. Of course, he might be in medicine rather than going to the NFL, but he can both punt and kick off with the best of them. Coach Kaufman. <laughs> oh, my God. He's got to worry now about the 80 yards facing his offense. Way to go, Pat. Beautiful 63-yarder. I want to tell you an anecdote about Texas Dick here in a second as Foley pulls out. Incomplete. As you know, O'Neal unfortunately missed the field goal real late. It was just a yes. little bit, I think it was wide to the right against Texas, mm -hmm. so they settled for a tie. So Pat went to the airport. They were I'm checking on. in. And the gal, she didn't know him, but she said, oh, you're from Syracuse. Oh, you you guys have got to get a kicker. You're as bad as the Dallas Cowboys missing all these field goals. Now, here's the poor guy. He feels terrible, worse than anybody. But it kind of, like, loosened him up a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's tough handling the entire kicking load. Now second and ten for BC. Foley fires complete, and he's had it going today. Great Bryce is the receiver Dwayne Joseph the cornerback face mask is the reason why that flag came down Boston College runs about 95 percent of the time out of that three tight end to the wing position now you'll see the face mask left arm right there by Dwayne Joseph reaching around there and grabbing that but they like to run the ball toward those three tight ends a tendency breaker right there come up give them that run formation look and throw over there one on one coverage And so the penalty being tacked on, and the ball will come out to the 48-yard line, where it'll be first down. You know, with the way he's throwing, when they get down there again, they should go right away and throw on first, first down, down into the end zone. First down. Not mess around. He is. You, it's amazing. I've you been hanging a around you. Coach I've week. been hanging around <laughs> you. I'm telling you. He's, he's in a rhythm today. This is as good as I've seen him throw. Across midfield. There's Mitchell, number 50, helping out on that stop. I kind of expect Kevin Coyle, the defensive coordinator, to come up with a drastic change type coverage, allowing some linebacker pressure, because if you give Foley the time to throw, he's going to throw it complete nine times out of ten, which he's doing here today. They're going to have to get blitz. somebody in his face. you got to get somebody in his face. You watch the Syracuse defensive alignment against Texas. They were somewhat soft, Dick. The linebackers were far behind the, the defensive linemen. There you see the four down rushmen. 
Yeah, he'll just drop it, and Campbell should have had it. He was defended by Hemsley, the linebacker. He saw Hemsley coming. Young Hemsley is just a, a redshirt freshman playing that linebacker position. He was in the computer study room there the other day when I was looking at tape and I went in and visited. He was uh, writing a paper for his communication class. He said he'd rather play linebacker than write that paper. Third and seven and watch for number 82, Mitchell, to get open on this one. Mitchell is on Foley's left side. Foley looking in that direction. Comes right over the middle and hits Pete for the first down. What are they going to do next, coach? <laughs> you got to come back with Comer now with a little change up here or Campbell. All right, see, they went zone coverage again. Now, here he is right to the middle of your screen. He's going to reach. Now, watch him leave off. He's looking at one linebacker there to widen him. Number, tw uh, number two, Daryl Parker. Then he just slides in and settles in that little hole. If the ball is late, he doesn't catch it. Has to be there on time. And Mitchell, six catches for 73 yards. Comer is the checks in. And Foley changes it up at the line. He sees three deep coverage back there. He's going to throw it. They're going after it. He was going deep against it. He's got a man. Touchdown, Boston College. It's Grice. <laughs> 38 yards. Foley's second scoring pass of the game. Grice the receiver. He should go for two now, Brent. Up by up by five, he'll go for two. Boy, I tell you, you I haven't seen Foley uh, ever look any better than he's looking right now. See, he saw the three deep tight coverage across there. He saw it. He said, heck, I'm going to go for the big one. He audibles, gets the X post in for a big play. Welcome those of you who've been watching Florida State. This is a two-point conversion for Boston College. They've just gone back ahead. So the two-point conversion is deflected away from the tight end. That is Foley, who just threw this touchdown pass. Dick with the newcomers joining us here in the audience. Take him down through this touchdown pass. It's just a good, he reads the play prior. He saw the coverage. He audibly changed it. He got the time he needed. Now you'll see the post pattern appearing to the left side of your screen. He had the one-on-one -on -one coverage exactly how he wanted it on Bryce Bevel with no help inside from the free safety. I really think the free safety should have been able to help him there to the inside. Good game planning by Coach Coughlin. And there's our situation. 120 to go in the third. Boston College leading Syracuse 19-14. This has been a seesaw game. BC led on a 39-yard field goal in the first quarter. Then Syracuse scored on its first possession. Marcus Lee, it was 7-3. Right away, it was the flea flicker for BC and Coach Tom Coughlin, 48 yards. It was 10-7. But by halftime, Syracuse had taken over 14-10. Then here in the second half, BC with a field goal and now a touchdown has taken a five-point lead, 19-14. There's the score by quarters. The BC defense shutting down the Orange men with Richardson on the right and Dardar, number 42, on the left. And the situation here has the crowd rather quiet in the carrier dome. Has quieted them down. You know, and Syracuse has done a good job of taking the way the run from Boston and consequently, they've opened up the game and thrown it downfield a little bit more, and obviously it's paying off for them right now. So a Big East battle being waged. Go, go, go! Dardar. Oh, thrown up and down at the 31-yard line where Graves and the Orange men will take over. Mike Brown did a real nice job of covering that kickoff. You know, the kids on the coverage teams don't get the credit they deserve many times, Brent. That was a real nice play by you. No, that's, that's Steve Marciano. Excuse me, that's Steve Marciano, 26. And yes, he is related. Yes, he is. He is a distant cousin, right? Nephew of the former heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano out of Brockton, Massachusetts. Brockton has turned out some fine football players over the last decade. A lot of them winding up at BC. Dardar, the ball carrier, into the heart of a very aggressive BC defense. 
they have really tightened up in there. I think we're going to see Syracuse try to get on the, the perimeter more now with that option. Get outside a little bit more and then come with the play action pass. Dick, how are they doing such a good job defensively against Braves and that option? What are they doing? Well, but what they've been doing is successfully is to make him pitch early right now and get the ball defined and into the perimeter and let the pursuit get there. Here's that option look. He turns it upfield. One of the few times that he's been able to find daylight like that, but he is short of the first down. Stopped at the 40-yard line. This is going to be third down and almost two yards. See what they did that time, Brent. They fired an inside linebacker that doesn't normally take that course. Look at the numbers right here. Marvin Graves, eight for 13, two for six, second half. Uh, defense doing a little bit better job and maybe not throwing the same high percentage throws that you were throwing in the first half. But they're firing the linebacker on the flow of the quarterback right now. That wishbone look and then Richardson steps over to a wing. They like to rush 40. Penalty flag is down. Might have been illegal motion or perhaps movement of the line. Let's see how the officials sort it out. Marcus Lee, the ball carrier. Offside on the defense. That's a first down. It's a costly penalty. Oh. They gave him a pass interference call in the very first score that allowed him to keep a drive going. Then they roughed the punter. Now they do this. Beat yourself. They're lined up offside. There they are. There's not any movement. His no. hand is right over the line. Hold it right there. The reason is the offensive line is so far back off the ball, the lineman's trying to crowd it. That's the end of three. BC ahead. Well, the officials realize that time cannot expire on a defensive penalty. Therefore, Syracuse will run the last play of the third quarter right now. Then they will turn around and come the other way. This is a first and 10. Ball at the 45-yard line. Braves spins away and is wrapped up short of midfield at the 48. Now they will turn around and come the other way. And while they do that, let us go to John Saunders in New York. John? Right in the Southwest Conference, Texas A&M and Texas Tech late in the first half. Corey Pulling, Eugene Lowry, who dodges a tackle, then goes into the end zone. Ten to six is how the end of the half, that's where it stands. And look at this. UTEP's backup quarterback, Corey Tucker, 14-yard touchdown run. They lead North Carolina. 21-7, Brent. A stunner. UTEP of the whack. Picking off the Tar Heels, who won a big one against State, eh, last weekend? 1914, Boston College with the lead. Syracuse with the ball right now. Second and seven. The ball at the Syracuse 48 yard line. See, they're playing real good defense on first down, Brent. They're not giving them those four and five yard plays, so they're ending up with second and long, and hopefully for the defense, they want them in the third and long. Braves off of there. Man, it's an easy touchdown as Marvin Harrison strolls into the end zone, 53 yards from Graves. It is so tough to defense the option and then the pass off the option. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this looks exactly like a run. Now, watch. They're going to pull a guard and trap. They're going to fake in there. The quarterback will come off the fake and then come back. And that corner, Reed, reads it as a run. Now, watch this. See, that looks run. That looks run. Now, look at He's trap blocking everything. Steps back, pumps. Look at that. Everyone's playing run. Here he is all by himself. He beats Reed. Boy, that's tough. Going for two points here now. Excellent execution. Up by one, going for two. And timeout is called. Graves calls timeout. I just am so impressed with his poise. The score is 20 to 19 right now, Syracuse. And we take another look at 
at Graves and watch the offensive line. Picture uh, yourself over here on the right hand side. Dick is picked up. Oh yes, they trap him. See, and to a defender that looks so much like run. You've got to get up there and run support. And unless you're in man-to-man -man coverage and you're just looking at a one-on-one -on -one situation, receiver on corner, you're looking back into that backfield. Credit the right guard, Dave Woolaba, with picking up Mamula with the key block up on the line on that play. And that enabled Marvin the extra time. And now Syracuse leading by one, wants to go for two here. His numbers have really improved in this last series. They're jumping up there 11 for 15. That's an outstanding job. Again, he says one of the reasons he loves the option offense, though it may be a negative in evaluating in regard to NFL potential, it gives him an opportunity to show all of the skills that he has, running, decision-making, play action, poise, make it look run, throw the ball accurately downfield. Dick, what do they like for the two-point conversion? Do they like the quarterback draw, or will they come back well, with they, Lee out of that wishbone look? Well, if they're in the wish, they have a variety of a package down here, Brent. If they're in the wishbone, I've even seen them take the quarterback and motion him out of the backfield and snap the ball directly and throw the ball to the quarterback. If they're spread out, then they like to sort of roll the quarterback in the direction of motion. Let's see what formation they're in. Richardson. Unbalanced. Formation left. Let's see, this is what it is. And it's going to be Richardson on an option. Dives for the two. What a play. A penalty flag. Hang on. There's a penalty flag on the play. That might have been illegal. They could be saying the quarterback didn't get up and get set underneath. See, just walked up and then went in motion. Remember, everybody has to be still, you know, for at least one second before anyone can go in motion. Let's see what they rule. Tough call. Yeah, the zebras are going to huddle... Uh George DeLeon pulled that one out of his hat, the offensive coordinator. I have never seen that play. Never. Oh, I saw it on the sand lot all the time. Oh, yeah. In <laughs> Montana, there's no sand. It's all snow. <laughs> now, here's the way I saw it. Now, Joe, uh, did the quarterback really go in motion? I have never seen that myself. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Look at Tom. He says, I've never seen this before. Now, watch the quarterback. See, he goes up there. See, he sees they're in an unbalanced left. Now, he just starts walking like he's going to call an audible, see, telling them what to do. See, now, he just keeps moving like that. And then he snapped the ball. And then, <laughs> here they come running the football. They deliberately deceived those scoundrels. And it worked. Dick Vermeil, this is illegal. Uh, well, I don't think they had seven men on the line of scrimmage. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. And as you go to the next shot, the wide receiver that was supposed to be on the line of scrimmage, you'll see him way out here to the left, number eight. He's really not on the line of scrimmage. He's back behind those offensive linemen. You no know, question. So he only had six men on the line of scrimmage. It's not, here it is right here. See, he's off the line of scrimmage. you got to have seven men on, on the, the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. So you can have more, but you can't have less. Oh, no, that's an illegal play. But it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets the job done, right, folks? Yeah. Oh, is, my. That'll be outlawed next year. Boomerowski's gone. That'll be gone next. So that one's already gone, Coach. That's <laughs> illegal. They don't have to pass a rule for that one. They just need the Zebras to count. It would have been legal if he had been on the line of scrimmage. Okay. What's up? Deception. It's not even Halloween. Nice job, though, Richardson. You did a good job. <laughs> oh, are they excited about that? But this game is a long guys, ways from over. That's great. Okay, ball out at the 20 now. The score is 22 to 19. Darnell Kimball is the running back. Foley with a hot hand. Incomplete. Oh, no. And you know, 
Julie Moran, you've got someone who's missing from that Syracuse defense. That's right, Brent. One of the leaders, one of the keys of this defensive unit, Dan Connolly, fifth-year senior, preseason All-American, out after reconstructive knee surgery. It has to be tough for you sitting out here on the sideline. Yeah, it's it's my second year sitting down and watching them again. It's uh, it's 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 tough, um, you know, mentally and physically. But I see you talking to the young linebackers. You're a real inspiration on the sideline. They, uh, you know, it's it's the same thing when when I went through fall camp. I think a lot of them looked up to me. You know, when they came in, I had a lot of big games, so they respected me. And when, and when I when I tell them something, I try and help them out. They they listen. It's not like some some schmo off the street telling them something. They, they really understand. And uh, a lot of times they're out there, they get confused. And uh, instead of just reacting and playing football like they do in practice, they, they kind of tense up and uh, they may not make the play they're supposed to because, you know, they may be afraid of, you know, being in the wrong spot. But Well, Dan, I know you're petitioning the NCAA to come back next year. Good luck. Thanks very much. All right, Julie, thank you. Cannon with a legal catch. The penalty was against the defense that time. So the ball is brought out to the 38-yard line. And Foley continues to rack up passing yardage here. Right now, 309 yards on the afternoon for Glenn Foley. The linebacker is picked up, and he hits Comer, the running back. Comer picks three. Comer up the middle and down at the 22-yard line. Excellent job. They picked up the linebacker blitz properly. Good protection. Gave Foley the time to locate the back out of the backfield down in that hole. Done a real nice job. Tommy Nail on the offensive center is sort of the heart of that whole offensive line. There he is, number 64. See, he does a good job of coming out there. Now watch him come out here and pick up the linebacker blitz. See, boom, just in time. Nice job, Tom Nail. First and 10 for Boston College after the 39-yard gain. Foley for the end zone. Touchdown, Ivan Boyd. They blew the coverage on that. Look at Coach Pasqualoni. They blew the coverage on that. Ivan Boyd having a big game. Averaged 21.8 last year. Here it is again. They blew the coverage. I'm sure there was a safety that was supposed to come over there and back up the corner who was rolling up short. And the safety didn't come over there. Going for one here. Wow, this game is not over. I don't know whatever gave you that clue. <laughs> well, those guys were celebrating there after that sneak play. There's a penalty flying down. Offside on the defense. Gives them another chance. Both teams misfiring with their kicking game. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, here you could also change your mind and go for two, but that, there's no real reason to, but that would happen many times in, in a, a different score situation, Brent. Now you put that ball in that one-and-a-half yard line, but he'll kick it again, and rightfully so. This time, BC successful, taking a four-point lead, 26-22. We'll be coming back. And it's wild in Syracuse, Big East Conference game, Miami. Dominant, already 3-0. This is the first conference game of the season for Syracuse. They have never lost to Boston College under the dome. They are 6-0. It opened back in 1980. But this is the 13th year, and they, what was that word she used? Uh, I can't remember what, I can't pronounce it. I know I can't spell it. Julie, help me. Where are you? <laughs> Ball on the tee for Beckley. Richardson and Dardar are back deep. Tristadectophobia, that's what it is, Brent. That well, took you a while to get the dictionary out. I had to get help from the truck. <laughs> Dardar. Oh, look out! 
Beckley gets him out of bounds. The kicker saves the day. I'll tell you, he got a devastating block right in front of the return. I don't know who made it, but I saw the guy go down to the left side of your screen. You'll see the wedge forming right there, and he got a devastating block right there. Oh, that was Al Wooten, number 38. It was a knock. Can we back that up and show that again? That is a beauty. To the left side of your screen. Right there. Look at Hold it right there. That is a knockdown, buddy. Woo! And as a result, a 46-yard return. Graves and the Orange men with the ball at the Boston College 43-yard line. Richardson, and he is finally being pushed back. Joe Kamara there, number 5, 93 is Chris Sullivan. Those kids in the defensive line have done a real good job today. Dan Rocco, the defensive line coach for Boston College, is going to be re really pleased when he studies these games tape because they're controlling that line of scrimmage, Brent, and they're allowing their linebackers to flow and make plays. Syracuse trailing by four. Thirteen and a half minutes left here in the Carrier Dome. Graves over the middle, complete to Eric Chenoweth, the tight end. Nice job of reading that zone coverage. He looked out there, he really wanted to throw it to a split end. They had the formation straight sent to the short side of the field, seeing that linebacker buzz out of there, and Chenoweth just read it. Real smart football player. Kirby Dardar running up the all-purpose yardage today. Dardar is an all-purpose player, believe me. Thomas Jefferson High School, Tampa, Florida, a long way from home, but he's playing well. Ball at the BC 29-yard line. First down, Syracuse. Braves hit as he releases. Good Deflected job. in the end zone beautifully by Terrence Wiggins, the free safety. See, that time the free safety was truly a free safety, and the action going left pulled the safety into the play. See, now the action to the right of your screen. See, now the safety's coming from the left, see? And that flow pulled him in with the ball. Good reaction by Wiggins. Nice play. Second and ten for Syracuse. Wiggins, a young man out of the Philadelphia area. Number 49. BC. Four down linemen as Chenoweth comes in motion. Braves. Keeps it on the option, and he's belted and is down at the 25-yard line. See, that time, no one got to the quarterback. They went to the pitch, but didn't get to the quarterback. Obviously, they blocked the man that was supposed to take the quarterback. That's what you call a loading principle, Brent, where you load and block the, define it and block the guy that's supposed to take the quarterback. Third and seven. Graves has been successful, slipping a running back out of the backfield. From the shotgun, Richardson is lined up to his left, and he goes out. Graves looks in that direction. Graves firing underneath and hits Hill for the first down. That was a real, real good read because they showed a pre-snap look of going to go two deep safeties there and played five underneath and instead they played a robber coverage meaning one of those safeties came up in the middle he read it and threw it to the short man properly they've got to get the ball more in Shelby Hill's hands if they're going to be successful offensively Syracuse after that fine kickoff return by Dardar with a first down at the BC 16 yard line see that's not he hasn't had the ball in his hands enough today Richardson broke a tackle, got away from Ted Page, and made it inside the 15-yard line into the arms of Howlett. There was a big hole there, but he didn't see it quickly enough to respond to it. Uh, it it's a draw play. You're getting the end up field. See, they get the end up field nicely here to the right, and the hole opens up to the right side, and he doesn't see it. Now, look at that hole in here. See, it just he sees the linebacker, and he doesn't take the hole, and he has a blocker coming for the linebacker. Hesitation, you're lost. Second down and eight. Watch out, quarterback draw. Hit 
There he comes. Graves. Uh, you picked up that formation, Coach. Great quick feet. But, but actually, John Reagan got out there on the inside linebacker and didn't take him on. If he'd have taken him on, they'd have scored with that play. Here he is now. Watch him get back there. He takes a three-step drop. Good boys. One, two, three. Now, boom, they get the people turned up inside. Now, you'll see Reagan right there didn't commit on that linebacker soon enough. There was holding back there on Chris Sullivan. Number 93 was being tackled and pulled down. Never had a shot at Marvin. They bring the uh, sticks in for a measurement. Offensive linemen don't hold. They grasp. <laughs> well, he clearly was in the grasp. <laughs> Made it for a first down. See, take a look at this line here, Dick. Yeah. It is so tough. The defense, everything Syracuse throws at you within a three-day week to prepare. Now you'll see the rush right there. See, now here's the hole right here. He's got, he's, got, he's got him hooked right there with his right arm. He's hanging under the jersey. See that? Oh, you can't get away from me. Now, on first down, Syracuse blasts with Al Wooten. Al the one. Wooten, I'll tell you. I talked to him on the practice field the other day. He loved to play football. Brent, one of 16 children. You ought to be able to run tough when you've been raised in a family with 16 kids. You're just getting to the dinner tables to fight, huh? You bet. Find your men. Falls. He's uh, working on a retailing and marketing degree. There's the Woot. Now that wishbone. Gets him a lot of options down by the goal line. Fumble! Flag. Fumble! He's Boston got College have pounced on the ball. There is a penalty flag that was thrown early on the play. Eric Shorter, the strong safety. Side on the defense. And what a break that is for Syracuse. Woo! Maybe that's why they got there so quickly. But somebody put his hat right on the football. Yeah, there it is. See it right here. Right over the ball. You can see, oh, encroachment. Oh, boy, did he get a stick on that football. Oh, that's too bad you make a defensive play like that. I didn't get it. Florida State big as Ward with four touchdown passes in that game. And Florida at home leading Mississippi State by three in the bubble bursting for Northwestern. Lee with both of the uh, early Syracuse touchdowns in the first half. This time, nothing doing. Second effort. They won't give him that. He was Brent blown down. Off that same action, same play action, they have a quarterback keep tight end on the short side, delay flat. If they'd have had that on that time, there would have been nobody around him. Nobody. They have it in the game plan. This is third and goal from the one-yard line. Syracuse trailing by four here in the fourth quarter. Graves cuts into the end zone. O'Neill in to kick the extra point. We'll see if they use the swinging gate. They have already used one little bit of trickery here on a two-point conversion. Got away with it earlier in the game when it certainly looked on the replays like they did not have seven on the line of scrimmage. And that's Kyle Adams the right tackle who is shaken up so Dick we can take a look at that touchdown again well again they're coming with that option they fake the full back up inside here he goes now he's coming out there they got him blocked right there there's a <laughs> someone grabbing somebody right there but you don't need much when the ball's on the one yard he's just stretching the defense hoping to find a little crack up inside 
and, and dive into the end zone, and that's exactly what he did. Adams with a fine block, and he was shaken up on the play. Number 79, they went over to his side behind Woolaba and Adams. Boy, they're hurting at the offensive line, too. They don't have a lot of depth at that position, and Kyle is a, a senior, Brent, and uh, Shelton Prescott is listed as his backup, who's, who's a redshirt freshman that didn't play last year. That could really hurt him. Now, as a defensive coordinator, you might take your best pass rusher now and move him over and put him on their offensive right tackle because he's going to be a young, inexperienced player. Well, the lead in this game has changed hands seven times here this afternoon. Been a wonderful college football game. Doesn't and get much better than this, Brent. Not over either. No, not over. Now it's O'Neill. This would give Syracuse one point advantage at the 8.56 mark. And that, folks, is a magic number for Syracuse. They are 229 and 0 when scoring 29 points or more, and they have reached the magic number. We'll be back. Tom Coughlin, once the captain here at Syracuse, in his third year as the head coach at BC, has to feel good about the fact that his quarterback has a hot hand. And speaking of hot quarterbacks, Mr. Vermeil, here's your Heisman winner. Charlie Ward, I tell you, he is just an outstanding football player. And what they're doing is they take advantage of his skills. They really utilize him properly from an offensive scheme, stand, scheme standpoint. But you know something? In the other year, Marvin Graves would be a real solid candidate. Not and because he is of that caliber, but Charlie Ward, really something special. So it's Watson and Comer, and they won't even get a sniff. What a great leg this young man possesses. Now here is Marvin Graves who brought him down <laughs> and scored the touchdown to put them up by three points. Now Foley, who's coming out here, has some great numbers today. Dickey's 19 of 26 for 371 yards and three touchdowns. So for Foley, those are Doug Flutie-like numbers as he comes out here with the Boston College offense. Well, his best game in his career is 344 versus Penn State last year, which we did the game. Mitchell's 82. That's been his favorite target. Diving reception by his tight end at the 24-yard line. I love the way Mitchell plays football. You know, he's the kind of guy... Uh, that uh, doesn't really care how he looks, you know, if it, he just he just gets the job done. Seven catches for Pete Mitchell. Maybe he's cramping up a little bit. Second down for Foley and the Eagles. They come with the running back, Darnell Campbell. John Saunders, we've got a big upset brewing, eh? Well, Brett, we did have Mississippi State had taken the lead against Florida, but Jack Jackson, inside his own goal line, decides to run it out and takes off, weaves his way across the field, sees the daylight, 100 yards for the touchdown. Florida back on top. That ties, of course, a record. Pat Green did it back in 1940. Florida leading Mississippi State 24-21. Brent. John, must be the water down there in the swamp, huh, partner? You just can't beat Steve Spurrier down there in Gainesville, and uh, shaken up here has been Belishka, the right tackle of now the he, Eagles. They're trading, they're getting their right tackles injured. He's the young man out of North Andover. North Andover, he's a first-year starter, Brent, he's replacing Ron Stone, who was a real fine tackle last year. Real good quality athlete in high school and shot putter as well as a center on the basketball team. And uh, this is his first year to be a starter. They have a real good training staff at, they're uh, led by Donna Bennett and, and Steve Bushy. Good trainers. Him walking off is a good sign. Now we see Marvin Graves, who's been 
receiving treatment here on the Syracuse sideline and Velisca walking off. That's a good sign, isn't it? As you pointed out, and a reminder that next our doubleheader game, Notre Dame and Stanford, the Fighting Irish against the Cardinal. A redshirt sophomore, Dan Oroskovich, number 70, replaces him in there, Brent, at right tackle. On first down, it's Comer with the toss. Todd is sealed up, and Comer breaks free. Comer out to the 48-yard line. They were tackling the ball, and with him, you've got to get him down. Yes, you see, they're not getting their shoulder in, and he's running out of those arm tackles. Uh, again, Coach Coughlin told me, this guy gives us what Chucky Dukes gave us last year, and this is really his first start. Now, watch him. He gets good block. Now, watch you see him trying to steal the ball right there. They're trying to knock the ball out. They almost get it. He regains control of the football, then he runs through some more. See, he's getting his pads down properly. First down off a of fake, it is Foley on first down, wide opens Comer, and Comer to the 35-yard line, and another Eagle first down, BC on the move. See, what they did then is they ran play action, froze people, and then the linebackers recognized play action, and they buzz out of there, then they check down the men they fake to. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now, he'll come in, he'll fake, and he'll pause, and then he'll check out late. Watch the fake. So he's actually faking the other direction. Now, see, now watch him pause, pause, pause. Now he checks down right underneath. Everyone's buzzed out of there. See? Foley with 392 passing yards in this game and going for more. He's got more. Wide open Boyd out of bounds at the five-yard line. They're beating that double zone. They're putting a man in in the face of the corner that's rolling up then getting the slot down on the safety and going to the corner and boy that's really tough coverage on those people real tough coverage good execution this is an all-time game for for Foley an all-time game I'll tell you George Young from the New York Giants is sitting here watching the football game Foley's making some dough <laughs> look at those first downs 11 of 13 good game planning three touchdowns by far the best that you and I have seen him throw and that even includes that wonderful victory for BC against Penn State last year on first and goal Alex Comer on a cutback slammed at the two yard line the Syracuse goal line defense crawling all over in that time Eddie Hobson 94 is there along with Greg Shaw 48 Well, again, they have big Darnell Campbell as the Big East number one rusher coming into the game and the leading scorer. The only thing, they're going to leave Marvelous Mark. Too much, much time. time. <laughs> I know it. They get in here, Coach. Yeah, I agree with you. And the decision BC has to be thinking about, if we don't get in on second and third, what are we going to do? Campbell battling, and he stopped short of it. I'll Good bet you number 50 had a hand in that stand over there. There he is, Mitchell. Evan Mitchell. Good pursuit on the defense. Boy, he really got to the ball. And because I'll tell you, when you knock uh, Campbell back, he's 225 pounds. You're knocking a guy back that can run into that end zone. Third and goal for BC. Forty-eight thousand standing right now in the dome. Campbell up over the top into the end zone. Touchdown! They're up by three now, Brent. They'll kick it. Kick the extra point. Well, here's your leading scorer in the Big East. They went with him. And he went right up over the top. See, he has that good leaping ability to get up there that high. Nice job. I like that haircut, too. Good job. This kick for an extra point is no lock here. <laughs> That's right. It's not a gimme. Perfect this time. Gordon nails it. But you nailed it too, Brent. You said they scored too soon, gave them too much time. Five minutes and 27 seconds. Woo!
Foley. Foley with a career day, 423 yards passing for BC, and they lead it 33 to 20. Do now he makes the pitch, but hold it right there, freeze it. They didn't get the block right here to stop him from getting to the pitch, and it was not a good pitch on top of no. it. Braves himself saying it was his fault. They take a six-yard loss, make it third and ten. This is a big play against the defense. They change Boyd up defense. goes down here on the right. He's going to try to charge the quarterback. Penalty flags all over. Illegal procedure on this play. 33-29, BC ahead inside of four minutes. Dead ball, false start on the offense. See, Steve Zabo, the defensive coordinator, called a, a, a switch defense, and they jumped real late, and it made the offense lose their poise. There's Steve Zabo right there. He's signaling and telling people what to do, and they made that jump, and it pulled the offense off. Excellent defensive football coach right there. He coached for Woody Hayes. A lot of other people, too. Well, here is a critical third down. They need 15 yards at the 347 mark. Graves would still like to throw for it, but he cannot get away from Teddy Page, number 90. Teddy Page is a real story. He's a young man that had a knee injury last year and was limited, only got to play a little bit. And then he had a, a knee problem again and had reconstruction surgery. His first game of playing was last week. You can see the players rallying around him. Uh, it's exciting and very meaningful to him because he's, he's paid the price in rehab work to get himself back so he can play this his senior year. Out of Cherry Hill, Cherry Hill East High School. Syracuse calls a timeout. This is a fourth down coming up at the 313 mark. And before we talk about the strategy here, Dick, let me do this promo. Tomorrow night on ABC starts with America's Funniest Home Videos. Then the new America's Funniest People, followed by Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman. Then on the Sunday night movie, Kate Jackson and Lori Laughlin star in Empty Cradle. That's all tomorrow night. Should be some... Good viewing for you on ABC tomorrow night. Now let's get to the let's get to the strategy. The situation is here. Do they punt it away here and try to get it back from Foley and the Eagles, or do they gamble all out and try to get the first down? I punt it personally. You got three minutes and 13 seconds. Yes, you only had one, but you've got a great punter. You've got a great punter. You're liable to put it right down there. I know he's very good at kicking it out of bounds down there inside that 10-yard line, but they're going for it, see? But if you turn it over here, then you don't have a chance. You need a touchdown to win it. You're down by four, so the field goal doesn't help you, but the way that Boston has been moving the ball, wow. Dick, they need 12 yards. They have got to get it up to the 47, almost the 48-yard line. It's the marker to watch. If they can get up around midfield, they'll keep this drive alive. They're going to use three wide receivers. They'll go to the shotgun. BC with four down linemen. Braves waiting, waiting, firing. First down, Syracuse. He hits Marvin Harrison. See, they start out showing a double zone coverage, meaning you can see a safety, a safety, a corner rolled up, and a corner rolled up. Now the receiver's going to work down and inside those people. See, they're actually going to work underneath the zone. There's no one threatening them. That corner should be more aggressive than that on that play. Joe should have played that more aggressive because he had safety help. A gutsy call by Syracuse. It Great pays call. off. Out of the shotgun again. Braves fires and almost intercepted at the 40-yard line. Michael Reed with a shot at it. He expected Harrison to turn back inside and run the curl rather than turn the out. And just as he threw the ball, he, he walked right toward the receiver and said, Hey, inside, inside. There's so many different decisions you make during a ball game as a head coach. Some of them go for you, some of them go against you. When the tough one goes for you, you're a genius. When it goes against you, that's when you leave yourself wide open for criticism. Number eight was Harrison. He's off to Graves' right. Hill, big play man, is down at the left. Second and ten. 
looking for Hill. Throws it to him. First down Syracuse at the BC 40. I wouldn't doubt now that you'll see Boston College go to a man under with five defenders underneath playing man-to-man -man rush for and back them up with two safeties playing free because you can't just give them those zone patterns. A field goal doesn't help them. A touchdown is what wins the football game, but they've got to take away some of this ball control type offense. Ball is spotted at the BC 41-yard line. 2.34 remaining. I'm underway here first and ten the clock has been restarted remember it stops on a first down in college football briefly Graves Hill 30, 25 to the 21 yard line see what they what they do with this type of play they take Hill and split out of the wide receiver and run him at a direct angle toward the center of the formation now watch him go right back inside that's Kerr a linebacker see now he releases him now if he gets man to man he beats the one and one he's got a zone coverage so he's just working about underneath there and the linebacker had been stretched by another receiver first and ten in Syracuse trying to pull off a duplication of last week here's Richardson spinning and to the 18 yard line so that's a gain of almost five yards for the tailback. Remember against Cincinnati, it was Richardson who scored the touchdown. They overcame a 15-point deficit. Welcome to the Carrier Dome. Time running out. Syracuse down by four, but they're inside the BC 20. Graves from the shotgun. Graves. Deflected, intercepted. BC with an interception. Brian Howlett off the deflection. Welcome everybody to the Carrier Dome where Boston College has an opportunity to upset Syracuse. Marvin Graves was leading the Orangemen toward the end zone when a deflected ball right here, Dick Vermeil, was I, intercepted. I think they went to a robber coverage, meaning they show a coverage and they release the safety up inside. Now watch the safety, he's just sitting there. That's Joe Camara right there. Camara right there reads it all the way, comes up and makes the play. That is what you call a robber coverage. He sits in the hole and he robs the quarterback of a reception. And then senior linebacker Brian Howlett with the interception. Now Darnell Campbell checks in. BC will attempt to run out the clock. Now this game has a lot of significance. Let me set the things that this means right off the top. Number one, Syracuse, if this score holds, Syracuse is not coming back to win the national championship, even if they go down to Miami and beat the Hurricanes. This is devastating. This team has already been tied by Texas. They were pushed by Cincinnati. Now they're going to lose at home. Now let me switch to the other side in Boston College. A whole lot of significance there. This is the most important victory yet for Tom Coughlin. And the first big one since they went into Happy Valley and upset Penn State. They were sent reeling late last year by Notre Dame. And since then, they have been beaten by every major foe. They have not yet won a game in the Carrier Dome that goes back to 1980. Boston College is 0-6. Two losses by Doug Flutie. Suddenly, this program at BC that Dick Vermeil has been saying all along was going to come around under Tom Coughlin has shown great legs here after losing to Miami and Northwestern. They have trampled Temple. Now their biggest victory of the year. And again, there's still 1-11 to go here against Syracuse. But if they do it, this is huge for the Eagles and Tom Coughlin, Dick. Oh, no question, because as you said, Brent, they got it going when they upset Penn State last year, but since then, they haven't reestablished that same caliber of performance on a game day. Today, they're doing it. What a job by Glenn Foley. Spectacular. He throws for better than 400 yards on the day and three touchdowns. Darnell Campbell, again, working against the clock. Boston College style of offense with the multiple formations, and they substitute a group of players in there, let's say three tight ends, and then they don't play just one formation with that three tight end package. They play six, seven, eight formations, and it really makes it tough to match personnel with their personnel from the sideline and part of the other defensive coach. 
Well, this is a team, folks, that I've got to tell you, in my opinion, the problem was publicity. After looking at the tapes of the Texas game, I think Syracuse lost an awful lot of key players on defense, and they really were not a team that had a legitimate chance, in my opinion, for national championship. I'm not trying to put them down. I think they've done a wonderful job up here. But when you overrate the youngsters, you tend to come down on them too hard. This is a young team, going to get better. It's a fine coaching job up here in Syracuse. And you shouldn't put the program down. They're losing to a good team here today. No question. I agree with you 100%. And yeah, you don't think these kids care? Just take a look at the expressions on their faces. These kids work extremely hard to succeed, and they're used to succeeding. Speaking of success and a team that can win a national championship, the biggest problem don't. for Florida State will be the schedule. They have got to go into South Bend in November, and they have got to go to the Swamp. They've got to go to Gainesville later to play Florida. That's going to be tough. And, of course, let's not overlook next week the wide right bowl. Miami goes to Tallahassee. Third down, Campbell. Blast for the first down. And a reminder that if time permits, and we should have a few minutes, shouldn't we, for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Saunders will have all the scores and highlights. You've got to be happy for this BC team. So we can bury one statistic. After scoring 29 points, Syracuse is finally finally going to lose a football game and that's an unbelievable statistic those of you who just joined us Syracuse was 229 and 0 in their entire history this is the first time they have ever lost after scoring 29 points Tom Coughlin and the Eagles did it I tell you he's tough he is tough, and he, he makes a lot of players mad at him, but someday when they come back, and today when they go in that locker room, they're going to love him and respect him for how he drives them. He drives them beyond their innate God-given talent. He makes them better. Uh, here are our Chevrolet players of the game, and certainly no question about Boston College. Glenn Foley was magnificent today. 22 of 29. 423 yards, three touchdowns. And Marvin Graves, you've got to admire him. 17 of 24 for 199 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Oh, does that shower feel good. First time ever, BC has won in the Carrier Dome. So long, everybody.